Happy Monday, everyone. I'm Martha with Nature Niche. And today I'm uh, coming to you from the store and want to talk about Eastern Tiger Swallowtail. So this is an occasion, occasional to common um, occurring butterfly in the southern half of the lower peninsula of Michigan. And it's hard to miss. It's three and a half to five and a half inches wide for wingspan. Um, bright yellow with bold black striping. So here's some pictures of the adults. And the males are always yellow, but the females also do a um, darker form, especially in southern states. And uh, both of them have the orange spots on the uh, lower um, hind wing. So that's how you recognize the adults. They have a pretty strong flight pattern, um, fly high in the treetops, and when they're nectaring on flowers, um, unlike the other swallowtail butterflies, and all the swallowtail butterflies have those dark, narrow tails on the hind wing, um, unlike the other ones, they tend not to flutter their wings, but actually um, perch while they're nectaring with their wings spread wide, um, which makes for great photo opportunities. So the um, males also tend to congregate um, at puddles or other moist places on the ground or sometimes animal dung to get the salts and other um, nutrients that they need for reproduction. The habitat for this butterfly species um, includes woodland edges along waterways, um, deciduous forests, and really um, places that are have edges kind of along the edge of a shrubby field or along a fence row and in michigan they tend to fly late may uh, through mid-october and um, over winter in the uh, chrysalis stage their host plants include tulip tree um, as well as hop tree um, magnolias and other things in the magnolia family ashes um, and cherries and wild plum. So you have to have those species to have them lay their eggs and have the right um, native plants for their caterpillars to eat. They nectar on uh, native wildflowers like common milkweed, joe pieweed, bee balm, ironweed, and uh, purple coneflower. And they have really long tongues so they can reach nectar in flowers that a lot of other butterfly species can't reach. They have a really cool um, egg um, and larval development. And by the way, I'm loving this book. It's a kid's book, uh, but we're carrying it in the store and it just has great photographs. So I love, I love how they have these different um, garden butterfly species laid out, but you can see the sort of um, life cycle of this eastern tiger swallowtail butterfly. The eggs are laid um, on those host tree plant leaves that I mentioned on top of the leaf. And then the first three instars of the species resemble um, bird dropping, so a very good camouflage technique. By the fourth instar, um, the caterpillar starts developing its um, green coloration and they have two um, eye spots that are sort of yellow orange with black. And overall this caterpillar is wider um, at the thorax or the front and the abdomen tapers. So an interesting um, overall form. And uh, right before pupating or turning into the chrysalis, the caterpillar will turn a darker brown. Um, it'll excrete some fluid, some extra fluids that it, that it won't need. And um, this species has two broods generally in Michigan. So that second brood, um, they'll form a chrysalis with a silk thread that kind of hold themselves upright along a twig or a branch um, or other plant stem and they will go into diapause in the fall and actually overwinter like this. So 
Um, pretty neat, all the changes that this particular species goes through. Um, and they also tend to, uh, as they're getting larger, um, to sit on top um, or bottom of the leaves, they will spin a thin pad of silk for themselves. So you, I wanted to show you, we actually brought in one of our um, tulip trees out of our native plant sale because there were five Eastern Tiger Swallowtail larvae on it. Um, so right here you can see the um, silk pad that one of the larger ones was um, sitting on one day. And um, I want to show you some of the actual instars. So one of those first three instars, I mentioned they look like bird droppings. There's one. So you can see the brown and white coloration. They're really shiny too. And then here's one that's probably just fourth instar. And boy, these guys get hard to find once they turn this green color. But you can see the eye spots forming. And they do something really cool um, in the with the green coloration called counter shading. So they actually are darker green on top and the green coloration gets lighter on the sides and that's normally where there'd be less light and um, the edges would appear darker, but they do this counter shading and uh, they uh, blend in really well with the leaf surface. So I'm gonna let that one go. And then I wanted to show you, we actually had Two large ones, one went down into the mulch, I think, to form a chrysalis. The other one crawled all the way to the top of our makeshift store display and formed a chrysalis there for overwintering. So pretty neat. I hope you'll stop by the store and Take a look, see this particular butterfly species and its different um, life stages. And, you know, I just wanted to say, this is really, these um, caterpillars are badges of honor. This shows that uh, wild type native plant nursery, where we source our native plants from, um, they make it a point of not using systemic insecticides like neonicotinoids to um, kill off any insects that might feed on their plants. And so our plants come already sort of preloaded with great native caterpillars um, and, and other species. So I was really excited, wanted to share this find with you and invite you into the store to come see them in person. I'll have them for the next several weeks. You can check them out and kind of watch them as they change. Take care.